We really have a great group of people. There are about 30 people registered. I don't know if everyone will join us, but honestly, it is one of the most diverse list of young leaders from our community that I've ever seen, ranging both in terms of age and in terms of synagogue affiliation. So for those of you all who are here, thank you so much for being here and being part of this. Um, our future okay. is, I'll, I'll talk to you. is you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jamie. We're we have our guest here. We have our guest here. So uh -huh. we are slowly, slowly, there are tons of people starting to hop on here. Um, like I had just said, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's joined us this morning. Um, leadership, the idea of leadership development is nothing new to Omaha. AZA started it almost 100 years ago. And it is really I think Omaha has sent out leaders beyond this community into the world that's infused that, that little spirit of Omaha in Jewish communities far beyond this little town of ours. Um, but those of you all who are here, you're really the true leaders. And thank you for joining us. This is, again, I, I look at this screen and I see former student youth group kids and I see best friends and I see new friends. And we are so lucky to have this amazing, talented group of leaders here within this community. And we are even more lucky to have an amazing supporter and philanthropist who is a champion of our community. So um, I'm gonna, there will be people joining in here shortly, but I'm gonna pass the mic to Justin, who is one of our Ben Gurion Society chairs today. Um, who's going to introduce our amazing and wonderful guest, Michael Steinberg. Um, and following Michael's remarks, Allison Freeman, who is another one of our BGS chairs, will be leading um, this morning's Q&A. So I'm going to put myself on silent and pass the mic on. Thank you and have, let's begin. All right, Jamie. Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, for everything that you and the Federation do to help us put on events like this. Additionally, um, introducing myself, uh, Lissy Kane, Jeff Silverstein, and Ali, Allison Freeman is our co-chairs of the Ben Gurion Society. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Steinberg. So Michael's inspiring road just proves how hard work and spirit and a spirit of giving can triumph every step of the way. Michael was born in Omaha. After his father's early passing, he went to work at age 13, bagging groceries to support his family. The Jewish Community Center in Omaha became kind of like his second home, where he was able to unwind and, and connect with others in the community. As he grew up, Michael worked his way through college at Arizona State University, where he was a brick tender to pay his way to degrees in economics and finance. In his father's footsteps, Michael embarked on a career path in commercial real estate with Leo Eisenberg Co. out of Kansas City. In 1983, St. Louis became Michael's new home as Eisenberg's office opened up a St. Louis uh, office. He served as the senior vice president and director of real estate, representing companies such as Walmart, Sam's, Kroger's, Lowe's, Payless Shoes, Pearl Vision, Blockbuster, and, and many others. In 1991, Michael co-founded THF Realty, standing for fun, grew to become the third largest commercial real estate firm in the United States, a $2 billion company owning over 20 million square feet of real estate, primarily shopping centers and other projects. Alongside his professional success, Michael's used his strong business leadership skills to transcend the philanthropic world. Generosity has made ripples of impact in communities around the world and in a variety of fields of interest. From his earliest projects in St. Louis, developing the Youth Technology and Education Center in Midtown, fostering youth education for jazz and renovating of the Dwight Davis Tennis Center in Forest Park, to the massive overhaul of Omaha's own Jewish Community Center. Michael is the definition of the word niche. His Jewish philanthropy has been felt by multiple Jewish overnight camps, a number of Jewish community centers, and by the Simon Wiesenthal Center's Museum of Tolerance in Jerusalem. This is a museum dedicated to principles of tolerance and human dignity. And as a lover of culture, he has a history of support in the arts, 
philanthropically, but also weaves art into many of his projects, as is evident by the amazing work on our new JCC campus. Recently, Michael was added to the Westside High School Hall of Fame, and this fall made a five-year commitment to develop the Jewish Omaha Holocaust Education Program with Creighton University's Law School. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, last February, Michael was named the AZA Alumnus of the Year. In his acceptance speech, Michael said, everyone in this room is part of a pond, and that pond needs to always be moving. Everyone in this room can make it ripple. Doesn't matter if it's a big pebble, a big stone, or whatever. I'm counting on everyone in this room to make the world a better place. Everyone, please join me in welcoming this morning's speaker, Michael Steinberg. Michael. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. I'm, uh, I guess I don't need to talk. I'm, I'm done. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Well, I'm really, this is, this is probably my, uh, I have a couple meetings today. I have a panel this afternoon about real estate, but really I love to see the young people because you guys are the next generation. And I tell my kids, I have kids 28 to 35 and uh, I, they're probably tired of hearing me speak on uh, how important it is to give back and do the right thing and be good citizens. And um, you know, every time I used to have Sunday morning uh, conversations with my kids every week for 20 minutes and we used to talk about how I was doing as a parent. And then I'd ask them how I thought they were doing as a kid. And so um, kids are, you know, it's fun. And I'm glad to see all the young people because you guys are the next generation. You guys are the next generation. Export all of our where we didn't want to have. Um, okay. You get. I interrupt you asked. really quick. Can I ask everyone to go on mute, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Michael, you got muted there too. I'm unmuted now. How am I doing here? Okay, good, perfect. Okay, um, so this is what I like. So I have I have a, uh, a philosophy. You know, history is great. It's really great to learn about history. You know, it connects the dots. But you guys, the future is unlimited, completely unlimited to what you guys can do. And uh, one of my things that I've really thought about is. How do I inspire the next generation? And um, growing up um, in Omaha was a, a wonderful thing. I grew up uh, a couple blocks from the crossroads. In fact, watched the crossroads being built and uh, enjoyed growing up in Omaha. It was a great, great Jewish community. I remember how generous it was and how loving it was. And uh, yes, my dad passed away early when I was 13. And, I worked at Hinky Dinky because uh, the Newmans were kind enough to give me a job. I'm not sure why they were kind enough to do that, uh, but I enjoyed bagging groceries and and uh, went to Westside High School. And it was interesting because all our friends, because if you lived on the other side of 72nd, um, you went to Westside and the others went to Central. And that was really the Jewish high school. And you know the place I hung out, you know, growing up was besides Bethel, which I really wasn't one of my favorite places, and Rabbi Kripke and I had interesting conversations but, uh, uh, about that, uh, but was the uh, JCC downtown across from Central High School. And uh, I used to play basketball there, hung out, and uh, it, it, was, it was my second home. And uh, I remember when I met Chuck Arnold, in blessed memory, Uncle Chuck, um, you know, he, he was the guy. And, you know, we all towed the line in his, uh, Alabama way. And it was a great thing. And, uh, you know, my Jewish upbringing in Omaha has really influenced who I am today. It's really made a difference. The, the, the uh, values that we got as kids and all my friends, and I, um, I still have a lot of friends in Omaha from those days. And uh, I can't tell you how important growing up in Omaha was, especially being Jewish. And so, you know, and I've had a lot of mentors along the way. You know, I've done a lot of dumb things. And, uh, you know, Dr. Phelps in Westside High School was, you know, interesting. And when I, uh, when he gave me a little pep talk about how, how I might not make it at Westside because I wasn't really studying very much to uh, people when I got in the real estate business. And I've always found that we're only as good as our mentors. And I really, I, I'm really, you know, telling you your group here, 
find someone you can be your mentor. Find someone that can inspire you and be honest with them and try to be a candidate and listen to what they have to say. I still have two guys uh, that I speak to regularly. One is uh, 79 and one is 74 and I'm 66. So they're my mentors. And, you know, it's the yin and yang. It's like playing tennis. You never want to play tennis with someone uh, not as good as you or with yourself. You want to play with someone better than you. And so, you know, this, this is important for you all to hear that because, you know, your future is unlimited. You guys can change the face of Omaha. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I have a little script they sent me. I'm not very good at following the script and I didn't write anything. So I just usually speak for what's on my mind. And, uh, uh, but one of the things, I came back to Omaha six years ago. Uh, my sister lives there, my brother lives in Lincoln. And, uh, you know, I, had, I still kept in touch with my friends and, but, you know, never came to Omaha. You know, came, you know, once in a while. And there was, a, I guess, a hundredth birthday party, someone said. And I said to my sister, let's go. Let's, let's go and see what we can, you know, what, what, you know what, if I can see all my friends that I grew up with, maybe some will be there, but not, I can have dinner and I'll go home. So I walked in and, you know, I had these great memories of the downtown JCC. I had these great memories of 1974 coming back because once I left high school, I, I, did, I only spent one summer in Omaha. The rest was doing other things. And I walked into the JCC and I said, oh my God, what happened? What happened here? And uh, I looked around and my sister says, what do you mean? I said, well, uh, this is rustic. And I did, I won't tell you the other part I said, it wasn't probably appropriate. And she says, what are you thinking? I said, just let's, you know, let's enjoy the weekend. Let me think about it. So on uh, Monday morning, I, I got up and I said, you know, um, this has got to change. This has got to change. So I'm going to stop there for a second and go back to my uh, JCC's experiences. So I've lived in Omaha since 1980. I mean, uh, St. Louis, I've lived in uh, since 1983, 84. And um, I had, I found three great Jewish mentors. Uh, in, 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 in St. Louis. And uh, two of them, Tommy Green uh, was the head of the, pre uh, he was, uh, he was the guy and before him, a guy was I.E. Millstone and he was the, he was the guy. And so I'll never forget meeting him, you know, back, back when I was uh, young, like you guys, uh, we'd go to the Federation meetings and Israel is always in a war and you'd have to raise your hand. And I go to a meeting, this cabinet, and I'll never forget it. Everybody's raising their hand. And this is 1984, 85. They're raising their hand for fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. You know, I raise my hand. I go like this for two fifty, and I'm thinking I'm I'm doing a good job, and I'm just embarrassed. I, I didn't know what to. You know, I didn't have any money, and so uh, I was sitting next to Tom Green, and at the time I didn't know who Tom Green was, and uh, he says, "Don't be embarrassed. Raise your hand." So uh, I said, well, "Mr. Green, I really don't have very much money," and he says, "That's okay. Besides money, you have time, you have energy." And you have some ability to think. So we need people like you. So what's the problem? He says, what are you doing tomorrow for uh, breakfast? I said, nothing, sir. He says, I'll see you at 6 a.m. at my house for breakfast. And that was a journey that I'll never forget. And there was a guy named I.E. Millstone who uh, I used to have breakfast with every week. That, but this wasn't a breakfast of 30 minutes or 45. This is three hours. He died at 104. In his lifetime, he gave away a billion dollars to charity. And so I'm here, I'm, you know, I'm still a little guy. And uh, so in 2001, um, they both call me in and say, we have, we have to talk to you. I'm thinking, okay, what, you know, what did I do wrong? It's like calling to the principal's office. I'm thinking, wow, you guys want to have, see me together. They said, uh, you're the guy. Now stop giving anonymously, start stepping up and thinking how you're going to change this community. It's your community. I said, what does that mean? They said, well, you can figure it out. You're a smart young man. Well, that was, uh, what was that, 20 years ago when I was in my 40s. And I thought, hmm, okay. And they said, the uh, first thing you're going to do is join the uh, Federation board. And the next thing you're going to do is join the JCC board. Because it's in St. Louis. It's two different organizations, even though they're on one campus. And I hadn't been to the JCC since 1988, 89 here. First place I went to when I came to St. Louis was the J, it was familiar. I still have a lot of good friends when I got there. And 
uh, I went there and I said, hey, 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 what am I going to do? This is rustic too. I had other words for that too. And uh, I said to, uh, I joined the board and the first thing I said is, let me see your financials. And they showed me the financials and I said, you're out of business. You're completely out of business. So Mr. Milson said, good, I'm glad you see that. So in 2005, I started a uh, plan to figure out how to re reimagine the JCC. The building was built in 1962. Uh, you know, it was 40 years old, similar to Omaha. We'll get back to Omaha. I haven't forgot that yet. And I, they said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, the first thing is we need to determine what lines of business we're at, where we're going to go here. And so after three or four years uh, of figuring all that out and building a new complex, we opened the new JCC in St. Louis in 2009, which was uh, still today is spectacular. And uh, I, um, it is just unbelievable. So that was my first JCC, but I also had to renovate in St. Louis. If one building's good, two or three times better. So they built another building they didn't raise all the money for. So I had to figure that out too. And it's still in Chesterfield, Missouri, exactly 13.2, a half marathon away from the existing building because they thought the Jews uh, were moving uh, west, similar to Omaha. They thought, you know, and that's why I'm, I'm glad they, they moved the J where they did. It was a very strategic plan. And so it, it, it's turned out well. The J is great. Uh, you know, I always hear, this is what I always hear. Well, there's not as many, you know, it's only 50% Jewish. Okay, that's good. I always hear that. And I said, but the 50% means that we tripled our Jewish involvement. And you know, we have more Jews because we, when, I, when I started on this, there was 1,700 uh, members. Today, we have 5,000. So if we took half back then of 1,700 and today half, we've done pretty good. So, and we're not just a fitness center. We have a lot of programming and we, we define what we are and who we are, and it's really made a difference. And I remember back to growing up in Omaha, how I hung out with all my Jewish friends. And it's amazing the same phenomenon happened here in St. Louis with people coming together and saying, oh, I haven't seen you for 30 years. And now, you know, we have a, a, vi a much more vibrant community. And uh, we did a, a Pew study, which I, I know Omaha did uh, a couple of years ago. And one of the things we learned is that the synagogues have done better. The Federation has done better because we have a strong place for people to gather. And that's really what I was proud of. So I thought I was really kind of done. Mr. Millstone passed away in 2010. Uh, my friend Tommy Green passed away in 2016. I thought, okay, I did my job. But obviously people had other plans. So uh, a friend of mine called me and said, uh, you wanna just come out and look at Denver? And I said, sure, he's been a friend of mine forever. I grew up with him, Jay Madden from Omaha, one of my best friends growing up. He lives in Denver. I worked for his dad for a while, a little short time in the summer. And uh, I got hooked on that and started that, Jay. And then I did, okay, you know, it's a different community. Uh, then I went to St. Paul because uh, Corey Cutler is from Omaha. He called and said, I heard you're really good at doing this. And uh, I went up there and fixed that, Jay. And then, Fast forward, I'm getting back to where I was on uh, the other thing, um, was that um, here I come to Omaha five, six years ago. And I said, wow, if I can do this in St. Louis, I grew up in Omaha, and how do we, how do we fix this? And uh, I called, I, back to the Monday morning, I called Mark Martin. And I said, you know, Mark, I have an idea. I'm just gonna come in and paint the fitness center put a new lights in, new carpet, kind of think, think about things, put a little art up. And he says, well, we have to have a committee. I said, then I'm out. I'm done. I, you know, committees, you get a camel. If you want a horse, I'd be happy to do this. And he says, well, I don't think you can do it. I said, well, I'm just going to go do it. And uh, so I started on the paint and the carpet and stuff like that. I just did it myself. And, uh, and uh, all of a sudden, everybody says, wow. And then I called my friend Tommy Fellman and Howard Cooper. Tommy's, uh, one of my uh, senior advisors, Larry Meisel, Tommy was his college roommate. And I met Larry in Denver. And uh, so I called Tommy and said, well, Tommy, I need you and Howard. Well, we're not sure we want to do this. I said, well, there's not, not sure is not in the vocabulary today. I said, we are going to do this because it's embarrassing 
And I said, we want to start with the JCC because that's a lot of revenue. And let's see how we do there. And uh, there was a lot of pushback. It was not like uh, kumbaya welcoming Mike Steinberg back to Omaha. Because, uh, you know, sometimes I don't use uh, influence. I use power or authority more. And I just said, this is what we're going to do. I'm really not into uh, meeting with 100 people and saying this. is. What, I'm just used to doing it. I run my business that way. Uh, I just tell people how we're going to do things and hopefully they come along. And Howard and Tommy did join me, major uh, contributions. But more importantly, they gave me a lot of advice along the way. And it's been a great experience. And tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, um, Sunday, I'll be in Omaha for the ribbon cutting. I hope everybody will zoom in and look at it because, you know, it's still limited capacity. And uh, it's, it's been a great thing. And I'm really proud of what we accomplished uh, in Omaha, the entire campus from A to Z, scoop the nuts. Uh, I've, given, I've given you a Porsche, Mercedes, Rolls Royce. Now it's up to everybody in Omaha to take the gift. I feel like, you know, it's coming up Passover and it's like we uh, in Omaha wandered in the desert for 40 years. You know, Moses never got to go to Israel. I get to come there. So I feel a little different than Moses a little bit. And it's everybody needs to be the brand ambassador to speak highly of it. You know, I hear it's not Jewish enough. I hear this, I hear that, you know, that doesn't matter. You know what? I'm glad of what we have. So now it's about how to operate the place to make it continual because I don't want to come back to Omaha. I'm good for another uh, 23 years, 24 years of working. I don't want to come back at 90 and say, what happened again? I just, that wouldn't be uh, one of my highlights. So I'm going to stay involved. But throughout this whole thing, you know, the different J's, I've also done a lot of other things that Justin mentioned. I've been, I've been the luckiest guy because I've had mentors. Again, I'm going to go back to my talking about mentors and people who will call you out. I have a saying in my office that a man that can't change his mind has no mind. You got to listen to people. We're not perfect. Believe me, I, uh, I still do dumb things. And I say things that are probably inappropriate in today's world. My kids tell me, Dad, you really can't say that. And I said, OK, well, I'll try to I'll try to be a little more appropriate. But my my philanthropic was to, to build. I'm a good builder. I understand buildings. I really don't want to operate anything, but I know how to operate things. I've run a couple of restaurant chains and I really don't like operating things. But it starts with good leadership. And uh, I have a, a philosophy, it's the four Ps, places which are buildings, programs, people lay, lay and um, professional. And of course you need one other thing, persons. You know, we need to keep this, uh, these economics working. And so I feel that by doing that, I'm really good at that. I've built a lot of buildings. I've built three, three synagogues, a Chabad house, two museums now, a lot of different things. About. $850 million of buildings for, for Jewish and non-Jewish causes. And one of the things I always tell people is you don't have to have a lot of money. I'm going back to what I said earlier. Look, we each get 24 hours in a day. We get to decide what we do with those 24 hours. How can we make a difference? But if you make a commitment, I'm telling this group, if you make a commitment, follow through, follow through. And it's Whatever the commitment is, I'm not saying it's big, bad, you know, just whatever it is, please just do what you say you're going to do. And I really think that it's important that we all make a difference. Uh, my philosophy, and I told my kids and our family foundation, is that 70% of anything that we do, and that's been the last 10 years, is for Jewish causes. Because I tell people, if we don't help ourselves, nobody else is going to help us. And, uh, you know, the J used to have a monopoly on Jews. Well, everybody wants to be a homogenized white milk today. Everybody wants to feel like they're part of society. I, I'm sure the Joshua Museum is great. I'm sure the symphony is great. I'm sure a lot of things are great. But we have a, a Jewish place that we now have in Omaha that we need to upkeep and to make important. And I can't, I can't say it enough. And so, I, you, know, you know, I can give money. But you know, the money I give, I feel better when I give smaller amounts to make a, make, a, make, make a bigger difference in the world today. And how do we make a better difference? It's not by giving a million dollars. You know, it, it's amazing what $5,000 will do, you know, or 3,600. I give, I give in increments of 18, 3,600, 7,200, 10,008. I drive everybody crazy with, the, with, the, with that. I mean, it's just, everybody, you know, looks at me like, really? 
But I, and I believe that, that we as Jews are in the same tent, we come in different doors. I'm never here to tell anybody how to be Jewish. You know, growing up in Bethel was very conservative when I grew up there, I remember they had a, it wasn't my favorite place to hang out. I, I won't say that again, but um, I did learn a lot, but you know, I don't tell, you know, I, I belong to every synagogue in St. Louis, 17 of them. I typically once in a while go to uh, the uh, Orthodox service, Young Israel, which is modern Orthodox, because I like it. You know, I know the prayers and, you know, that's my back Bethel background. Uh, and, but I also go to reform and other things like that. And I really, and I really think, I really think that if we accept everybody who's Jewish for how they want to be Jewish, I think it sets the tone. So, you know, I've talked, I don't know how long I've talked for here. I've talked for probably 20 minutes. I could talk for hours about this, but it's just, I, I, my, in my, you know, my philanthropic ways aren't changing. You know, I, I said, I wrote a letter to everybody that I was in uh, the nonprofit business with. And uh, I've concluded Kansas City. I forgot I did Kansas City. A friend, I, grew, I lived in Kansas City and the first place I went to in Kansas City when I moved there and I didn't know a single person. 21 years old, never been to Kansas City, went to Kansas City, and the first place I went to was the JCC. And the same thing is in St. Louis, and I still have friends. So a friend of mine who had been my accountant who just retired said to me, have you been to the Kansas City J lately? And I, I had the same reaction that I had in uh, Omaha. And he says, so what are you going to do? And I said, okay, count me in. So uh, three months, five months ago, we opened the renovation, and it wasn't as extensive as Omaha. And uh, I'm really proud of that. So I came to the conclusion that about uh, three or four months ago that it's time for me to, I hope I've inspired the next generation. And I can't, I can't always be the guy continuing to do this. I'd be happy to give advice, help, talk to, talk to a group like yourselves, but it's time for someone else to do it. And it's not like I'm leaving. And I tell people that I say, coaches do retire. So, and I hope the legacy will inspire other people to be the coach because it's not the lack of money, but once you give people money, it's like you, you give them a fish for the day. You don't teach them how to fish. And my goal now is to teach people how to fish. And the Federation here, I was on their board. I was uh, for many years. And I said to them, look, I'm getting off the board. I'm retiring. Not because I don't believe in your mission and what you do. And I, and I, and I, I mentor four people here. Uh, every six months, I pick another four kids to mentor. And my, 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 uh, I, have really I really have a hard schedule. Every 30 days we get together, you come with questions and be prepared and be on time. And we got 30 minutes. And it's amazing the difference on one-on-one. -on -one, and I really am happy about that. I still wanna do that. I really enjoy doing that. But the days of me coming to Omaha every month or every, every couple of weeks, and, uh, you know, worried about what the color of the hallway is going to be or how much art. And, you know, I do like art. There's plenty of art in this place. If you haven't been there, please go out and look at it. I'm proud of the art. I think we have close to, I've given close to 400 pieces of art that is from my collection. You know, I'm, uh, I, I, have a, I have a problem. I buy art way too much. Everybody in my office, if you come to my office, I have about 3,000 pieces here. And uh, someone said to me today, well, one of the walls, the art's gone. I said, yeah, we're, we're just rotating it for the week. You know, we just need to kind of change it. And, and um, so I like art and I think art makes the place better. And I'm really proud of the art that we put in Omaha and it's the nuance, you know, science, art is good for science, but art really makes the place. So with that, um, I think that's about what I got today. I, you know, as I said, I could, I could, I could keep talking for hours how important it is to give back. And I don't give to get, you know, I, I could care less about my name on any building. In fact, one of the things I did was in 20 years, take my name off that building in Omaha, find someone else who wants to, to step up, put, put some money in and take my name down. And I remember doing that in uh, St. Louis the first time in 2009. I said, you know, look at 20 years, take my name off, you know? They're not gonna remember who I am. They might say, oh, he was a nice guy, but you know, that's okay. So take my name off and, and reinvigorate it. I, every time I do something, I do that on every building. And, and it's, it's just amazing to shock people say, really? I said, well, names aren't forever. You know, things do change. 
And so I have a different philosophy in giving. And so today I'm proud of where we are. I'm proud of what my kids do and my family does and our foundation. And, you know, we really try to make a difference and we try to do things, you know, that just give the money and make a difference like the anything grants in Omaha. Lori Sullivan's been a great advocate. She's done a great job here. Here's the money, raise half of it. You get up to $5,000 and how can we make a difference? In St. Louis, we give a little bit more because I live here and we have, we affected uh, last year, 600,000 people. 600,000 people were touched by the money we gave and we gave $62,000. And I don't know how it came to be 62, but it was. And so I'm proud of that. And so I don't tell anybody where the money goes. And I uh, asked a young group of kids to really give the money away. So you'll learn. And I'm all about how to inspire you because I look at my friends, they were not inspired. Their parents did a bad job of inspiring them. And a lot of my friends have a lot of money and they said, well, our parents have given enough money. Well, stop that, please, you know, come on. And if they aren't giving any money, the next generation of those kids aren't giving any money. So, you know, it's, it's just a different world. And so um, with that, I will answer any questions. Thank you, Michael. Um, I'm going to start the Q&A uh, portion of this. Um, so if you guys have questions for Michael, will you please put it in the chat? Um, and I might start us off, but I just want to thank you again, Michael. Um, I loved hearing about the Omaha connections throughout your life and your philanthropic journey. You grew up in Omaha with my father. Yes. <laughs> uh, remained friends with him. And I know that my uh, grandmother and your mother were dear friends. And so it's really fun to be on this Zoom with you this morning um, and hear from you and have everyone get to hear from you too. You know, Allie, I'm gonna interrupt you. So I asked your dad, I said, is Allie Freeman the Allie Freeman? Yeah, my kids don't change their name. I said, okay, <laughs> good. Cause I asked him the other day, cause I saw your name. Yes, your dad is a very dear friend. I've known him uh, since I've been uh, one and a half and your, your, you know, your, your grandfather, Melvin, Jerry Freeman really stepped in and I will say this. So my dad died and again, without someone like Melvin Freeman, who took time to really help me. You know, I'm 13 years old, I'm lost. You know, so when you see him, give him a hug for me if you can, because um, he was really an influential person. And there's, there's a great example of a mentor. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, thank you, thank you, that's great. Um, and the JCC, I mean, I'll just say, as you were talking, I was thinking the JCC, so I have two grandparents at the Blumpkin home, including my grandpa, uh, Melvin and two kids at the um, Early Learning Center. So I feel like the JCC right now is playing a more important part in my life than maybe ever before. Um, so it's exciting that the transformation is complete and hopefully sometime soon we'll all be able to enjoy it together. Um, so I'm gonna remind everyone, if you have questions for Michael, put them in the chat, but maybe Michael, I'll start off. What has been maybe the most surprising part of your philanthropic journey from when you got started to kind of today as you think about maybe stepping back in some ways? You know, I, I tell you what, it's the amount of people and the interesting people I have met along this journey. You know, I never thought by doing this, you, it's just amazing the number of great people I have met through this journey who I would have never met. And I, I am still friends with these people. And it's not that I want their money or anything, but you, you get a different point of view. And it's just, I, I, I can't even tell you the number of people that I've really met and the number of things I've gotten to do that I would never have done. And it's hard to describe because, you, you, know, it's, you know, I'm in the real estate business, but these people are in all types of business and that you get a different point of view. And it's great to have that kind of opportunity to really look at what other people think, how they think, what, they, what they're looking at. And it's just great. That's really been the best part of this. But, but also the fact that I've helped so many people. And, you know, in, uh, in, in charity in the Jewish way, you know, the, the highest form of uh, charity is you give money to an organization or a person, they don't know you and you don't know them. And a lot of the charity that I've given has been that way. You know, I mean, I, I don't know who in Omaha I've affected. They know me, but they really don't know me because, you know, I'm not there. And it's really something that, you know, how can I, how have I affected enough people? And you know, what I've done is really important. And uh, you know, I'm not looking for anything. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy. And if people acknowledge and just say, thank you, I'm the happiest person. I don't need any gifts. I don't need any, 
fancy cards or anything. And it's just like, just I'm glad I've helped these people. That's really been what I'm trying to do. And it's so easy to help someone, you know. So that's really, Allie, what my greatest thing has been. That's great. Um, I don't see any questions yet, so I'm going to keep okay. going because okay. I, I have a few. Um, what? So as you think about talking to your daughters, who are I think the age of some of us on this uh, Zoom, like what, like kind of really tangible things are you telling them as they think about philanthropy? Kind of at our age because we're busy we have some of us have young kids we're just starting in our careers um so what is kind of some of your tangible advice that's, that's a great question so i still talk to my kids once a week about this it drives them crazy i have a 35 year old that has two kids i have a 31 year old that uh, uh lives in new york and a daughter 28 that lives in atlanta and um I tell you know, I gave them money to give away. And I said, here, and you know, it, it was, they were paralyzed. They couldn't figure out how to give this money away. They just, they couldn't, they looked at me like, well, and my one daughter gave some money to Planned Parenthood. I said, okay, we're done with that. Thank you. I'm glad you like Planned Parenthood. And my one daughter in New York now is a waitress for the homeless people two days a week. She says, dad, I really don't know what to give the money to, but I'm giving my time. So from six to eight, Mondays and Wednesdays, she is a, a waitress for homeless people. And then she helped raise money for the homeless shelter. And uh, she's also part of a, um, a Jewish organization there that I had never heard of that uh, helps kids, preschool kids. My daughter here is on the uh, Jewish um, Light, which is the Jewish press. Uh, she's a graphic artist and she's also does that. And she's also part, she also volunteers at the food pantry. And, uh, you know, they do that. My youngest daughter uh, is in the uh, YPD uh, in Atlanta, and she also volunteers at a food pantry. And so we talk about it every week about what they're doing. And I ask them that they have to give away a certain amount each year. And I tell them that 70% has to go to that. But I tell them, you got to be involved. You'll never know who you might meet by doing this. And uh, so... You know, everybody's busy. You know, I hear that all the time. Well, I'm dad, I'm busy. No, you're not busy. I mean, you're the luckiest kids in the world. So let's let's figure out how you're going to make a difference and uh, and be good kids. You know, and I said, it doesn't have to be only Jewish, but 70%. And, and so I'm proud of my kids. They're really working hard at it. And they ask questions. I said, should we do this? Should we do that? And I send them articles all the time. You know, they're probably uh, tired of that. And um, all my kids went on birthright. My uh, oldest daughter met her husband on birthright, which is which is great, um, and um, they had a great time. I, you know, I I insisted they go to uh, uh, birthright, and I insist that they go to Israel once in a while. And you know, and, and my uh, grandkids go to a, a Jewish day school, and they're going to go to uh, the JCC camp. So it's great. I'm just trying to get them, you know, subtly to understand how important it is to give and. Uh, you know, those Sundays when we talk to each other, they look at me like, okay, dad, we've heard this speech before. I said, good, we're going to continue with the same speech. Am I at least consistent? And they said, yes, you are. That's, that's a good story. Um, and some good advice, I think, as we all think about how we can stay involved um, right now. As you, so um, Justin, in your introduction, he shared, I think, that you recently made a commitment to help develop the Jewish Omaha Holocaust Education Program, right. um, which I think was news to me. But I'm curious, like, how do you think about what your next philanthropic projects are? Is there kind of us, like, things come to you, people obviously come to you, but do you have any sort of um, system or process as you think about, okay, what's next? What am I going to give to next? I do. That's a good, that's a great question. Um, so I sat back and said, okay, I've built $850 million of buildings. Great. You know, I've done my buildings. You know, I've also done camps. I've done three Jewish camps. You know, I've done, I've done, I haven't missed, I even, bought, I even built a, uh, a mikvah. So that was great. You know, I've done that now. So I'm, I'm pretty good. Synagogues, mikvahs, camps, and, th and, and things like that. So I'm really, really happy with that you know it's been uh you know something interesting um so i said now what can i do to change the world and make a difference 
So one of the things is we're building a Holocaust Museum here in St. Louis, the MOTJ. Um, and I said, well, how do we let people know about anti-Semitism? How, how do we do things? So I'm now funding programs that will make a difference. Um, you know, the uh, Creighton is a great program. I decided to do the same thing for Maryville here in St. Louis. Um, I'm, I'm also giving, uh, paying for, it's called EOS, uh, which is a uh, traction type of, uh, for nonprofits, how to learn how to become better business people. I'm trying to do it that way. The Anything Grants, things like that. That's really where I've shifted my interest to and trying to make these organizations operationally better. How do we become better at what we're doing? Not for profit doesn't mean not for loss. So I'm really trying to figure out how we can do things that don't cost a lot of money that I can go around and say, hey, today I have a call with Aaron Fingerhut, the, president, the head of the JFNA, Jewish Federation of North America, and how I can inspire and get things done to make the federations and the leaders better. Because we're only as good in our organizations as our leaders. You know, one of the things I said was the P is the people. It's the, it's the, non, it's the, it's the lay leaders and the professional leaders. And we need both. And I do believe that we have not done a good job of developing our lay leaders and our professional leaders. Just because, you know, someone's Jewish doesn't mean they're the right person. And I don't mean that, you know, it doesn't, you know, I said um, to the Federation here six years ago, uh, they were looking for a CFO. And they said, well, we have to have a Jewish CFO. I said, well, numbers aren't religious. And, and not, unless I, I'm missing something, if someone can help me, tell me how they're religious. You know, you know, I mean, you know, so, you know, it doesn't mean you have to hire everybody Jewish, but they have to understand your mission. And one of the things we don't do a good job of is explaining our mission. And the gentleman we hired in St. Louis is more, probably more Jewish now, you know, he's Dur Shabbat, and he's kosher, and, you know, he's not Jewish. So I said, great, Don, you've done a nice job. So I really, I really believe that's what we really need to do. And so um, I'm really trying to focus on that now how to make a difference with smaller amounts of money and hold people accountable and say, okay, I'm gonna give you X, now you raise the other X, okay? I mean, how do we get people to put skin in the game? It's so easy for me just to come in and say, okay, I'm gonna take care of this. But I, I, you know, you're, not, you're really not inspiring anybody to really participate once you do that. And really that's what I'm trying to do is how to make sure we do that. And I'm sure in three or four years, I'll be back building buildings because I, I can't help myself. But I've really been really, you know, my assistant's happy because she doesn't have to listen to all my uh, complaining about someone not fixing a door. And, uh, and my guys here are happy, but I'll be back. But now my trying to make people accountable and things like that, there's a, um, uh, everybody's heard of Jack Dorsey, Twitter. Everybody knows who he is. There's a guy named Jim McKelvey here, he, and uh, he's also part of Twitter, and they're, they're from St. Louis. And so they came to me, and they wanted to um, teach the African-American community how to do uh, coding. And so I became part of that process. Didn't build a building, but gave them money so they could do the operations and bring kids in. And they have now got 1,000 kids from the African-American community that are now coders. Whatever, whatever that is, I'm, I'm not good at explaining that. I had a hard time even getting on the Zoom today. So, um, but that's what I'd like, you know, how can I do that? Um, I was also about why tech, it's a school, you know, for uh, minority kids. And there's a, a school here called Lift for Life. How do we get these kids? Because, you know, there's a, a, a theory that if you don't know how to read by third grade, you're 80% more likely to, to go to prison. So. And uh, we've also been involved in uh, College Bound. And College Bound was to help kids get into college. So I'm trying to do more things like that so that I can make a difference to society. You know, we can't fix, there's no magic bullet or magic pill that's gonna fix our society. Um, you know, the things in Omaha are no different than the things here in St. Louis. Our society is our society. And we really need to figure out how we can do a better job and be stewards of our society. You know. Um, you know, the world's changing drastically, drastically. And we're trying to really figure out how we can do a better job. So that's really what I'm trying to do, Allie. 
in my uh, life today. Thank you for sharing that. We have a question in the chat from Ben Taxman. Um, do you have a philanthropic endeavor that you are most proud of? Well, I used to say I was most proud of the JCC in, in St. Louis. You know, I really was. That was the first thing, really a really a big thing for me to do. I, I, I put millions in. I put probably 20,000 hours in. I was really proud of turning, you know, I was the board chair for five years, which was way too long. I couldn't kiss any more babies and say hello to everybody after five years, but I turned it around. They were going out of business. And today it's a vibrant, even with COVID, it's a, uh, but I guess, you know, when I look at my next, my best project, it's probably Omaha, Nebraska. I'm really proud of what we've accomplished. And, uh, you know, I walk on that campus and I look at things and I say, wow, I never thought it could be this good. I was just shocked by how, how well it turned out. And, you know, there's a lot of great people that helped me. This was not, you know, I have the saying, there's no I in team except two in idiots and uh, one in inclusion. So, okay, we've got the inclusion and the idiots out of there and uh, we've been able to make a difference. And, I, you know, and on this call and on Sunday, I'm gonna thank everybody in Omaha. This was not just, you know, it took people to see the light a little bit. And, you, know, you know, nobody likes change. Nobody likes change, you know, and, you know, everybody says, well, Omaha is conservative and this and that. I hear that every place. Our community is different than anybody else's. But I guess, you know, uh, right today, I would say my second most proud is Omaha. And of course, I'll change that in October when the MOTJ opens in Israel. You know, we built a building of $300 million, uh, which should have cost about $700 million. I worked on it for 10 years and, uh, I haven't been able to go, but you know, we were we had a board meeting yesterday. It's spectacular, you know. But again, it's only spectacular the building. What are we going to do operationally? What are we going to do to make a difference? And I believe that Omaha is set up to make the difference. St. Louis has made the difference. So I'm asking you all to make the difference. Come on, you guys live in Omaha. You know, I come up every now. I'm going to come up every six months uh, to see it. But you all. If you see something wrong, call me out. Call someone. Just don't let it say, oh, well, that's just how it is. That, that, that's, that's how we got where we are. And we're, now, we're, now we're in the future. And there's going to be a lot more stuff going in Omaha. So, so, my, so my proudest moment today, today, I'll answer the question, is uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Thank you. OK, one quick last question. And then I think we're going to wrap up. But what is your most favorite uh, place in the new JCC campus? Like if we all go there, like what one little place or room or part are you most proud of? Or is your favorite, is your personal favorite? Oh, okay, that's good. Um, well, that's, a, I know, so I don't know. I have to think about that. You know, I usually can answer that. You know, probably, I'll tell you what probably it is, walking in the new lobby. You know, the gym is the gym, uh, that lobby, Nobody imagined it. I, and I told everybody we had to move there. Of course, you know, the synagogue and everybody's looking at me like, really? Uh, you know, and you walk in and you feel like you've arrived. It's like a, it's, it sets the tone for the building. And the, um, there's going to be, I'm not sure what they're going to call it, the Hall of History or Jewish Omaha. There's going to be all the history of Omaha that's being done by a great museum gentleman out of uh, Kansas City. And it should be done in about a year. And it's got the Rikus Museum in there and it's got other things in there. It's got about the Holocaust and that will really set the tone for what this is. But when you walk in that lobby today, um, you just say, wow, I had no idea. And you know, also, you know, driving in now, you know, the landscaping, the uh, artwork, the new lighting, you even have a sign on 132nd street, which was never theirs. And so, you know, paint, you know, staining the building, it's just, the sense of arrival is there now. And so, you know, you feel good when you walk in. I guess that's it. And also all the art, you know, I like all the art. You know, I picked it all. Um, I'm not sure I like all of it, you know, even though I picked it, you know, art's, art is the, uh, in the eye of the beholder. Uh, but, you know, there's certain things I like and certain things I don't, but there's some great art. And uh, that, that makes me feel good. So when people walk in and they feel good, that makes me uh, extremely happy. Michael, thank you so much. Thanks for your time and your insights today. I think we have to wrap up, but really appreciate you, uh, you joining us this morning. So thank you.
You're welcome. If anybody, you got my email, email me, be happy to talk to anybody. You know, I, I have one rule. Don't call after 10 and don't call before four in the morning. I'm good. You know, and my rule is I answer every, every single uh, email within 24 hours. I'm not, you know, I'm not really uh, very good at text because sometimes I forget to look at my text, but I'm getting better at that. And uh, I, I figured out how to delete my messages on my phone. I got a new iPhone and I didn't realize someone called and said, your, your, uh, your messages are full. And I said, what does that mean? How could it be full? Because I keep swiping away. And, and so I figured that out yesterday. So anybody that has happens anything? happens to me too. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. I enjoyed it and uh, hope to see everybody soon. Thank you. We hope so too. Thank you. And, and thanks to everyone for joining. Um, I think Justin introduced me at the beginning. My name is Jeff Silverstein. I'm one of the, the chairs of our BGS group this year. We're going to plan one more of these uh, virtual sessions later this spring. And then keep your eyes out. We're going to have, a, God willing, a, an in-person event this August and uh, be able to gather together and really looking forward to uh, joining in person. Um, and again, thanks for joining us this morning. It's really uh, a pleasure to be with you all. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy a great restful Shabbat.